He doesn't give me a little bit of forgiveness. It's a forgiveness for all of them. And He doesn't give it to me on a piecemeal basis, just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, on an installment plan. Get that? And then a little later, you, He just says, Here, man, there it is. You say, Ooh, that's a lot. He says, It's, it's extravagant. It's outrageous. And I'm going to track you down with it. <laughs> Abounding. Busting out all over kind of stuff. That's how God, that's how you measure the forgiveness of God. According to the riches of His grace. That's what we call the radio program, The Riches of His Grace. The outrageously extravagant grace of God sends our sins away to Calvary where He pays for them Himself. And that means that God can deal with all of my sins once and for all at Calvary. Now, when I started, we come over to Colossians chapter 3. We, we started that verse in Romans and it says, Blessed is the man, happy is the man, thrilled in his soul is the man. And I want you to understand that forgiveness is a happy, it's a thing that will cause joy in your heart. And it gets misunderstood, and we're going to talk about that later on as we, as we study through about why it gets misunderstood. So let's just start today rejoicing in it and be happy about it. The word that goes along with forgiveness that I think about most often, and that you'll find in Paul's epistles, the epistle of Paul that says the most about forgiveness is the book of Colossians. And the one that says the, the, that in that book also has a lot to say about thanksgiving. Because those two things, forgiveness makes you happy, David said. And happiness is another word for thanksgiving. And if you want to understand Ephesians 4.32, or Colossians 3.13 where he says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Same verse, same idea. If you want to understand that, you see it in Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, now, I read that verse and I say, whatever you do in word or deed, everything you do is either a word or a deed, isn't it? That pretty much covers the whole of your life. Whatever you do in, in the whole of your life, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And when he says do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, he's talking about do it in the authority and the identity that you have in Christ. But you know when we pray, what do we do? What do we say when we pray? When you get through praying, you say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, don't you? You know when you're doing that? 
You understand that the, the, when you pray, you have a right to come before God in His presence on the basis of, of the identity He gives you in Christ. Literally what he's saying here is in your whole, your whole life should just simply be a prayer that says to God, the Father, thank you. Father, for what you've given me by your grace in Christ Jesus. You see, we need to understand forgiveness not just so that we can say it, but so that it can live in us. And so that it can turn our life into this truth, into a life that just says, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We call that grace motivation. Paul said, for the love of Christ constrains us. If you're here today and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your own Savior, if you don't know that all of your sins are forgiven completely and totally, that you have this outrageously extravagant Forgiveness provided by the grace of God. And there are things you struggle with today. And then there's debt, and there's offense, and there are things, and you say, Oh, if, if you just knew about me what I know, you'd, God could never, God knows all about it. He knew all about it before you were born. He knew all about it when Jesus died at Calvary. And that's why He died for your sins. And He did enough to pay for them all. He offers it to you as a free gift. And it's yours to receive by faith. By trusting what He says in His Word. By being persuaded in your own heart that what he said he'll do. And God will save you today. And my Christian friend, rejoice in the assurance that God has sent our sins away to Calvary and that Calvary covers it all. Jesus did enough, and He did it for you. And be happy about that. Rejoice in the Lord and allow that truth to make your life just a life that says, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Our Father, we thank you now for the time we have together. We just pray that these wonderful things might thrill our hearts and encourage us to, to, to have it be the life of Christ that lives in us. We'll thank you in his name. Amen.